So it's a question of the little stuff and the big stuff. The big shapes and the little shapes. The big shapes and the little shapes. First the big shapes and the little shapes. The expression that I think about all the time is, uh, you know, not seeing the forest for the trees. How you paint the forest without painting the trees in too much detail. So that's a little, uh, mystery, mystery yeah. quiz for the painter. Get the big picture and then get the details. So these are these brushes that I've been using and, um, and then putting them on sticks. Soft ones, hard ones, bristle ones. Like here's this very sad little beautiful Chinese brush that's Never should have seen oil paint. So what I, what I do is I kind of trim them. I give them a haircut. And try not to have even spaces. Like this is no good. Because it's too even. You know, these are, these are just hardware store brushes. I could uh, navigate a kind of stream-like uh, movement with the long brushes working on the floor and uh, thinking about you know where the pauses were in the painting where the white was as important as the dark it's not about volume it's not about describing weight it's about describing emptiness in fact. In the scrolls of Chinese painting, you go in and out of different intimate moments without a particularly singular vanishing point, without a particularly singular narrative. There's multiple narratives going on. So that also interested me a lot in the scrolls that I ended up making. And now slowly, uh, six years later, the figure has started to creep back into the painting. Thank goodness, you know, I, I miss the figure. And I, and I like uh, particularly this one because the figure is really quite hidden. You can, you, you know, you can certainly look at the painting for quite a while before you realize that there's a, a figure there in mm -hmm. the painting. I'm looking at the relationship of the study to the large painting. I've just been just been working on it for the last couple weeks, so now that I'm looking at it with a little bit of distance, I see what needs to be worked on, pushing the space back in the bigger painting and, and getting that foreground to sit. I also, uh, I also had to add two inches to the bottom because the proportion wasn't quite right. So I had to sort of fake the bottom three inches of the painting. And what's happening is that the space is falling down rather than sitting as a plane going back. It's going like this rather than like this. So that's a problem as well. More also I have in the big painting, I have a sketchbook in the foreground. I don't have a figure in the big painting, but I have the presence of a figure 
the absence of a figure by including the sketchbook in the watercolor box, which you can see in the study, just doesn't look so, it's sort of smaller. Uh, always tricky, always difficult moving from a sketch to a painting, always difficult. No matter how much preparation you do, there's always a, there's always, always the, the reality that the sketch is better than the painting. It just, that's how it works. You give up the intimacy of the drawing when you work large. Okay, so from, from this watercolor on Terraskin, adding the little cutout, so I'm sort of recomposing it with white. Uh, so there's the figure again, and the landscape is sort of completely changed by now. It's actually not bad. But I wasn't satisfied with the left-hand side, even though I liked the right-hand side. So I tried it again by just putting a piece of paper over and trying it again. But I wasn't pleased with this tree, the way it, it pushes, it doesn't really sit in the space. There's no space around that tree. So I tried it again here. And then I found, I, I like this figure, and here she's sort of sitting on a rock. the reclusive uh, Chinese poets. There's, there's a big history of their poetry and their painting and how they decided to leave the city and go on a lifetime of retreat in the mountains and connect themselves to the uh, life force of the world through their painting. something about trying to get that muddy, it's not muddy water, but it's brook water, so you always see the, uh, the mud. And it's not, we're not on the Côte d'Azur here. We're not on Turquoise, we're not in the Ile Turquoise here. We're in Vermont with little fishes going up and down the stream. Light. Beautiful. It's because I've been painting now for 50 years, most days of my life. And it's because I have a practice that's so based on, um, you know, and on drawing. That, you know, there's finally a little liberty in, in how I can work. The fact that I can go from big to small, or that I can go from watercolor to oil, or that I can go from a sketch to a painting, all these things, you know, that's, those are the years in the studio that uh, they don't just happen, you know, they don't just, you know, there, there's no such thing as talent, you know, talent is, you know, it's, it's a question of being in the studio all those years and, and plugging away and throwing out two-thirds of what I produce. It, it, and you know, trying to figure out which is the, what's to keep and what's really the legwork that gets to what's to keep. So 
Yes, that's that.